Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus is the Lord. Time is running out. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's not crying. He's not having a conniption fit. He's not up there in heaven. Oh, God, can't stand these end times. It's too hard. That's not the Lord. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> He's not going to ask you if you want to stay behind and help and miss the rapture so that you can stay in the earth to experience the bowls of God's wrath. But if you're one of the 144,000, that means you're a man and that you have not defiled yourself with a woman and you follow the lamb wherever he goes, then you will receive a seal on your forehead. Those are the people who are left behind. And those who worship the beast and his image. Those are the only two people that are left behind. The 144,000 and the billions of others who worship the beast. Here it is. Are you ready? Listen to this. Jesus speaks of the end of the age. Okay. That's what it's called. The end of the age. Matthew 24, 7, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of birth pains. Then you will be, this verse 9, then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. Oh, now let's correlate that with Revelation chapter uh, 13 real quick. Let's go to, I'm going to just, I'll just quote it. Revelation chapter 13, it says that the, that the beast was given authority to make war against the saints and overcome them. And look at what it says. You will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. You will be hated by all nations. Not one nation, not most of the nations. All nations are going to hate just the very few remnant who stand firm and remain faithful to the Lord and refuse to take the mark of the beast. Look what it says. You will be handed over and persecuted and put to death. You will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, Jesus is not saying now. He's saying at that time, referring to the end of the age, which now is now. In other words, when he said it, he was referring to the end of the age. Now we are there at the end of the age. So he says, At that time, many will turn away from the faith. That's your great falling away. Look what it says. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he says, Concerning the day of Christ and our being gathered to him, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come until first there be a great falling away and the man of sin is revealed. Then it goes on to talk about who the man of sin is, the Antichrist. At that time, Matthew 24, verse 10, At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Those Christians who take the mark of the beast, will betray and hate the Christians who refuse the mark of the beast and stand firm in their faith. They're going to hate you. If you stand firm for Jesus and refuse the mark of the beast, the minute they take the mark, they're going to be really angry at God. They're going to be angry at you for standing firm in your faith, and they're going to betray you. And remember I said that for those of you, you who stand firm in your faith. Remember I said that? And for those of you who end up taking the mark of the beast, remember I said that. And you will. And look what it says. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. That's what I'm saying Claire is from Still Small Voice. And I refuse to not proclaim what God told me to say. Jesus is Lord. Time is running out. Are you ready? And listen, here's the, here's the real test of a prophet. Is what they say comes to pass exactly as they say it. <laughs> Praise God, Jesus is Lord. 
I'm telling you, it's going to happen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look at what it says. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and betray and hate each other. And it says, many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Now, does that have anything to do with the itching little ears wanting to hear, wanting to be tickled? And what the Bible says about how in the end times, the day is coming when people will not be willing to endure sound teaching or sound doctrine. And so wanting their ears tickled, they'll turn aside after fables and fantasies and fairy tales. How about this fairy tale that we're all going to be raptured up before the mark of the beast comes out? How about that little fairy tale, fable, fantasy? Anyone who teaches that is teaching a lie straight from the devil. You can, I can prove that from God's word. Look at that. False prophets will appear and deceive many people. Now, you tell me what's more dangerous. For me to stand here and say, don't worry about it. You're just going to be raptured up. And you're going to just, you know, kick your heels together and say there's no place like home. And suddenly, pixie dust is going to land on you and you're going to fly away with Tinkerbell. Or, to preach the truth that says, many are going to fall away from the faith. Those lukewarm, disobedient, whore-on-the-beast Christians. I'm not talking about... Listen, that's why the Bible calls them the elect. And the Bible talks about the saints and God's prophets and saints. It doesn't say anything about Christians in the book of Revelation. I'm just saying. Because all those Christians are going to be falling away. And the only thing left is going to be the elect and God's prophets and saints. That's why it says the elect. That's why it says prophets and saints. Some of you just are just now figuring that out. You mean you're saying that a lot of Christians are going to fall? Yes. That's what, that's, those are the ones who are going to fall away. Jesus is Lord. I'm telling you, Jesus is Lord and this is God's word. Matthew 24. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Now, you need to just take that verse apart. He who stands... First of all, when it talks about the love of many will grow cold, it's talking about your love for the Lord. It's talking about that heat that you get when you think about Jesus, and you're just like, Whoo, Lord, ho! And somebody, and when you hear somebody saying, Oh, Lord, hold back. We want you. We want more time. You say, What? No, no, Lord, don't listen to them. Come, Lord Jesus, come. <laughs> Those who love the Lord are not sitting there running around trying to figure it out, asking for more time. That's what the foolish virgins were doing. Isn't it true that the foolish virgins didn't have enough oil? Then they're like, oh God, we need more time. So they ran off to get more oil. Meanwhile, those who were the wise virgins were obedient and had their oil full of vessel or their vessel full of oil and they were waiting for the bridegroom to come and they were ready. And the Bible says, come Lord Jesus, come. The Bible doesn't say, oh, we need more time. Hold back, Lord, give us a little more time. That's a lukewarm, disobedient whore on the beast that's saying that. I want to bribe the beast a little bit more. Just saying, that's why they're asking for more time. They want to ride that beast a little bit longer. For them, it's a little merry-go-round. We're on the, you know, they're bobbling up and down on that thing. And in the act of spiritual immorality with the beast, that's why she's a whore. We all know what a whore is. Look what it says. And this gospel of the kingdom will be, will be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations. And then, the, that's something I've been saying, that before, any, before the rapture, before Babylon the Great Falls, before the mark of the beast comes out, the gospel has to go out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. And that's what I proclaim happened. Oh, you know what the Lord told me? He said, don't worry if they don't believe you. He said, don't worry, because one day... When we all stand before God, God will say the official date that he officially said that the gospel is out was September 23rd, 
<laughs> and I'll be standing there, and John and Paul and Peter and all those guys will be like patting me on the back, and I'll be like, oh. I'll be like humbled by it. I'll be like, oh, well, I didn't want to see it. I thought I was wrong. And I, and, but nobody likes the prophet anyway. They all said I was lying. I don't know. Thank you, Jesus. That's what I'm going to be doing. Then. Okay. So we'll leave it at that. Oh, look at what it says. Look what Jesus says in verse 20. Matthew 24, 20. Pray that your flight will not pl take place in winter or on Sabbath. For there will be, in other words, Jesus basically presumes by default you will be taking flight. How many of you have actually spent time in prayer saying, Okay, God, on the day that I have to flee, on the day that I have to run away, God, please, I pray you protect me, lead me, guide me. How come nobody's, that's my next video. I'm going to start warning about people to start praying about the day they have to take flight. And then I'll and I'll just keep saying Matthew twenty four twenty twenty four twenty. What's your have you are you caught up on your twenty four twenty? Oh my what? On your Matthew twenty four twenty. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Jesus said you will have to take flight on the day that you have to flee. Are you prayed up about it? For there will be great distress unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no, no one would survive, but for the sake of the elect, those days are shortened. Why are the days shortened? Because of the elect. That's the rapture, folks. That's where the rapture happens. The days are cut short. That's your rapture. Those are the elect. For the sake of the elect, God raptures them out. That's the harvest of the earth, Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. And you can put it all into context. Everything lines up, and it's all going to happen exactly as I'm saying. And you can test me against God's word. And, and those of you who don't, you don't have to believe what I'm saying now. I used to tell this to people when, when I'd get a word. You don't have to believe it. But when it happens exactly as I said, you can call me and tell me. Everything you said happened exactly as you said. I've had dozen. Well, that would be an exaggeration. But I have had it happen. Actually, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be an, an exaggeration to say that God has used me to predict the future in personal lives of people and individuals that I have known. In some cases, even writing it down sequence, step by step, just like it's written in the Book of Revelation, first seal, second seal, third seal. You know, gospel goes out, Babylon the Great Falls, Mark of the Beast comes. God's used me to do that in personal things, details in people's lives. And they call me years later. Everything you said is happening right now, exactly as you said it. More than one person has done that. That's why I can confidently stand here and tell you, Still Small Voice is a false prophet. She's meeting with a demon, and she's fellowshipping with a devil, and her teaching is leading all these people who are going to ultimately take the mark of the beast and go, I thought the rapture was supposed to already happen, and I wanted to be left behind to help anyway. Well, that's your chance right there. Take the mark of the beast. You'll be left behind. That's why it says he, he has his cup of his wrath that's going to be poured out full strength in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. And then in Revelation chapter 15, he's got the bowls of his wrath. That's what he's talking about. The cup and the bowl are the same thing. In other words, the cup of his wrath in Revelation chapter 9, uh, chapter 14, verse 9, where he says that his anyone who takes the mark of the beast, God has the, you know, they will experience the wrath of, of God poured full strength. And then the very next chapter, what's he doing? He's pouring out the seven bowls of his wrath. So those who take the mark of the beast, they're going to be left behind and have to live through that. Amen. Time is running out. Jesus is Lord. Get your heart right with God. Don't wait for the rapture and then say, Oh, I'll get my heart right with God when the rapture happens. There is no left behind. After the rapture, the door is closed. There's no second chance. That's the whole point of him coming at a day and the hour that no one knows, that no one's ready for. 
But those who love him are always ready, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're in love with God. They love him. They're not saying, oh, Lord, hold on. They're not asking God for more time. They're saying, come, Lord Jesus, come. Those who love God are saying, come, Lord Jesus, come. Just saying. Don't be deceived. 